So, folks, we're going to be making a game. The, the game that we're making is going to be a, a clicker game. It's going to be like a... It's, it's not really that this is an exciting game. I don't think anyone's going to say, like, oh, man, that first game we made, I'm so proud of that first game. It was the best game ever. It's really a tutorial game. Uh, a tutorial game that will teach us the trappings of making games in general. And then we can kind of expand on that. So the game itself will be pretty simple, and that's by intention. I, I want to start fairly low. This project will probably also be smaller scale than our previous project. So if you found the, the last project, like, oh my gosh, like, that was a lot. Uh, this one will be a little bit smaller. There will be some new concepts, for sure, uh, and that can be confusing, but I think it'll be pretty good. But let me know. Ask questions as we go. Please ask as many questions as you can. So we're going to start off. Uh, we're going to be making the good old void setup which of course is the function that contains the code that is what happens at the very beginning, beginning of the sketch. So we'll still be using it for the same kind of things. Also, it's going to be used for loading all of your assets like images. We're going to do sound effects for this project, learn how to make sounds, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and just kind of setting variables default value. And of course, we also have the void draw. And the draw function is, of course, an, an engine, so to speak. It's a, it's a, a looped function that happens every, uh, you know, approximately every 1 60th of a second, although it can adjust how fast it happens depending on how much work it has to do. And it's happening over and over again. That's what creates animation for us and just like changes over time so that uh, we can make things like games and animations and interactive projects. So the draw function will be basically where all the stuff that is running in the game happens. So one of the things we're going to do for this project is we're going to split up the draw function. The draw function is where all the code was for your sketch pad, right? And we had to scroll, 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 looking for, you know, where's the slider? Where's the buttons? Where's the, you know, all that stuff was all kind of crammed into one big uh, draw function. So we're going to start off this, like, new way of organizing our code by splitting the draw function into different pieces. And each one of those pieces will be in a different tab. So I don't know if you've noticed, but there's, it's possible to make separate tabs. So we're going to make a tab for all the code that goes into the intro screen. And we'll make a tab for all the code that goes into the game over screen. And we'll make a tab for all the code that goes into the game itself. And that way, it's almost like we're splitting up a big project into several mini projects. And this is a, a really important uh, concept in computer science, and not just programming, but computer science in general, where you know, you're trying to solve a big problem, like make a clicker game. You, know, you don't just like start typing, you know, putting in ellipses and rectangles and that kind of stuff. What people do before that, uh, and this is called top-down programming, by the way, is they break up the problem into smaller problems, and they tackle one problem at a time. So for example, we're going to have a game with an intro screen and a game over screen. So just making an intro screen, that's kind of like what our first project was, right? We drew a picture uh, or you know, the animation or whatever. Like that, that's its own, almost its own project right there. We won't have to make anything too fancy for our intro screens. Don't worry. Uh, it's not going to be that elaborate. But you know, it'll be nice that there's just a separate place for that. And then when we have a problem with our intro screen, we'll know where to go. It's probably in that tab. So that's the intro screen tab. So we'll break up our draw function, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. I'm going to make a, a single variable, an int, that's going to keep track of sort of what screen are we in. Are we in the intro screen? Are we in the game screen? Are we in the pause screen? Are we in the game over screen? And we're only going to have four different screens. I'm not going to call it a mode, by the way, because it doesn't necessarily mean a screen. It can mean other things. Um, so I have a, this mode variable. It's going to be int mode. And this is how professional games are made. I had a student go into the gaming industry. And he was like, Mr. Pelche, it's, so, it's just like what we did in class. It was exactly the same. And it's like, yeah, I know. This is, this is how it works. Uh, we'll have more modes in future games. I, I can think of like a game like, um, I don't know, like the, the old Pokemon games, you know, where you're like traveling around in like a big world map. Well, the world map would be one mode. And then when you're like in a shop, that would be another mode. 
and like the different kind of ways of experiencing the game would just be all these different modes. And you know, more complex games can have many, many modes. So that's that's going to be a good start. I'm going to actually instead of using numbers, like I know we have to use numbers. You have to say things like mode equals one or five or you know, in a more complex game, there'll be like mode 88 and this kind of stuff. But I don't want to have to memorize what all of our modes are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a set of variables that will just have those, um, the number that represents that mode, but have a name that reflects what that mode means. So I don't want to ever have to program mode equals and then some number. So I'm going to start off this organization by making a bunch of variables that will represent those modes. So I'll do int intro. And actually, I'll kind of make these in all caps. Uh, int uh, game. Int uh, pause. Int game over. And I'll just give each one of these a number. So, and it doesn't matter what the number is, by the way. You could give it any number you want. Uh, but I'm going to just go in order because I don't see a reason to mess around with it. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So intro is just 0, game is just 1, pause is just 2, game over is just 3. But now I can use, instead of using the number 3, which I might forget, I can just use the word game over whenever I want to set the mode. So check this out. I can say things like mode equals intro or mode equals game over. And although I'm just assigning an int uh, number, like that reads like English, right? Like that just kind of looks like a sentence. And this is one of the things that we want to work towards for your code. Uh, you want to try to make your code read in a way that even someone who doesn't know what you know, processing is, like say my uh, my brother came in. He's he's a hockey historian, not a coder. So if he looked at this and he was like, you know, what's going on here? He probably have an idea, like, you know, oh, are we going to? Is it setting it to game over now? You know, it, it kind of makes sense. So this is this is a nice way uh, to program things. Instead of just writing mode equals three, I can now say mode equals game over, and I never have to remember that three is the number we're using for game over. Uh, there's one other thing I want to do with these variables. It would be an unfortunate error if somebody accidentally changed the value of intro during the course of the of the game. Like maybe you write some code you didn't mean to write it, but like you just accidentally increased the value of intro. Well, then you'd have two modes that have the same value. So what we're going to do is lock these variables so they can't change. And the way you do that is just put the word final in front. So I'm going to put final int intro, final int game, final int pause, and final int game over. And all that word final means is that these won't change anymore. I can't, once it's locked in, if you try to increase game over by one, or you try to set it to six or something like that, it will actually cause an error message, and you'll realize the mistake right there when you're trying to do it. So think of final as sort of a lock that will lock these things in place. OK. So this is going to be how we're going to start every project from now on, any game anyways, or any project that has multiple modes. Uh, and, and we'll probably add more as we go in the future. For example, maybe a game will have an options screen. You know, so you have to add a new mode called option. Uh, you know, we might have a, a store where you could buy loot boxes for here, clicker gamer. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what yet. So we can expand this, and it will be relatively straightforward to expand. Uh, I'm going to start our mode at intro. And I guess we should put a size, hey, for our project. I don't want to get too fancy. I'm going to put 800, 800. I guess we'll be fine. And then we're going to go organize our draw function. How are we doing so far? Does anyone have any questions? Are you feeling all right? Yeah, good. So the biggest thing is about to happen next. So watch out. We're actually going to make that those modes mean something coming up. And, and we're going to cause an, an error. Like when I type out the code, there'll be like red underlines. 
But don't be worried about that. Don't be stressed about that. <laughs> it's, it's known and it'll be okay. Uh, so if that does, some people will get a little bit uncomfortable when they have an error message just kind of sitting there, sitting there. But don't worry, it'll all be good. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to divide my draw function into different sections. I don't want to have my intro screen and my game and my game over screen like all programmed between these two braces. It'll just be so annoying to like scroll around. Even if you made like great comments to divide it out, it's still kind of annoying. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a, a set of if statements so that I can check the mode variable and I can see if it's intro, uh, if mode equals intro, then do the intro screen. But if it equals game, then do the game screen. But if it equals pause, do the pause screen and so on. So we're going to build that into the draw function. And then we're going to leave the draw function alone. We'll never touch the draw function after this. Because all the draw function really needs to be is just subdivided into the different parts. And then we'll just program those separate parts. And so we can just leave the draw function all by itself and focus on the individual sub problems that we're, we're trying to solve. So this is what it'll look like. Uh, and you might, uh, you might want to save this twice. You might want to save it as just like, I'll let you know when we get kind of done this, this uh, framework. It's called the mode framework, by the way, um, industry term. And I'll let you know when that is. You might want to save a separate copy of it because just about every project will start with the mode framework. And, and, and when we start doing new games, I'll be like, okay, everybody set up your mode framework. And then we'll get started. Like it'll always be like the beginning of a project. So you might want to save this as a separate thing when we just finish the mode framework. And then we'll continue adding to it and we'll save it as the clicker game after that. But here we go. We'll do the, the framework here. So basically we just check to see what value mode is. So I'll check to see if mode equals intro. Then we'll do one thing. And then this I don't think we've done before. Some of you may have seen it, but I don't think we've done it as a class. Instead of doing another if statement, we're going to do something called else if. And I'll explain that in a bit. But we'll just put this down uh, so you can see the whole mode framework. So then if mode framework, or sorry, if mode equals game, do this. Else if mode equals pause, do this. Else if mode equals game over, do this. And then there's a final else with no if. And then there's your mode framework. I'll just, uh, sorry, I'm kind of making it bounce around here. There we go. The whole draw function fits it in there nicely. So why don't you go ahead and type that out, but let me know if there's any questions as you do it. And while you're typing this out, I'll just mention what we're doing right now is setting up an organizational framework for our code so that future, uh, our, our future efforts are easier. We're putting in some work right now to make uh, you know, making a big project easier on ourselves later on. It'll be easier to find the mistakes. It'll be easier to um, sort of work on the separate problems. If we were working with other people, it would be easier to work with other people. There's all sorts of good things that are, are possible here. And I recommend right now, check your braces. Like I would go, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you click on a brace, it highlights the matching brace. So before you go any further, you can just go double check that you know all your braces have matching braces, because you know that it's going to be a pain if, if you have to find it later on. So while the code is fairly simple, I just go verify. Oh yeah, this one matches here, this one matches there. You might want to press Control T, although it'll collapse it. If I press Control T, you can see it, mine collapse there. But Control T is really nice because it will line up all of your indentation with the open and close braces. So here's an open brace, so then everything's indented. And then when you open it again, like I don't have any code in here, but if I did type in code in here, then it would get indented as well. And so that's nice. It kind of helps you see your matching braces a little bit easier. So. We have our draw function now subdivided into four different modes, and then there's a final sort of catch-all uh, area here as well for like what happens if mode is 99 or negative 14 or something. So we have kind of a final catch-all. So the way this if-else works is basically 
it will start at the top. It'll check to see if mode is intro. And if mode is intro, if it turns out that mode's value was the same as intro's value, then it'll do what's ever in the braces, and it will not check any of the rest of these things. That's the difference between if and if else. If you had just a bunch of if statements, then it would check every single if statement. But an if else is a chain. All these are connected together. And once one of these conditions works, then it doesn't check any other conditions. So basically what happens is that it can only ever do one of these, I guess, five different options. It'll pick one of the five. It'll never pick more than one. So you'll never have the intro and the game modes happening at the same time. And you can sort of change the channel, so to speak, by changing the value of mode. So if you, you want to like go from intro to game, you can just set mode to game. If you want to go from game to game over, you can set mode to game over. And I'll just change the channel. I'll just make it choose a different option just by changing the value of mode. So mode will act as like the channel button, so to speak, on your TV as you want to like you know cycle through the different possible options. We're not going to put the code for the intro screen in here, though. And we're not going to put the code for the game in here. Because could you imagine? It would just get kind of messy, right? Like, just, just imagine, like, if this was 50 lines of code here and 100 lines of code in here. And, you know, you, if you forget a brace in this one, then that becomes the brace. And, like, it all gets tangled up. Like, that just kind of scares me to think about trying to code inside of those braces. And for good reason. And I have, like, a computer science degree. And I've been doing this for a long time. And it's not that, you know, I don't have the experience, but I'm human. And humans don't, you know, we're not, we didn't evolve with a good sense of, like, matching braces. That wasn't important in, you know, hunting and gathering, uh, you know, 200,000 years ago, right? We're really good at a lot of things, human beings. For example, facial recognition. Fabulous. We're really good at that. Because that was something we evolved to do well. Brace matching? No, we aren't good at that. So I'm not going to try to pretend that I'm smarter than I am. I'm going to acknowledge that as a human being, I got limitations. I'm not going to fight against that. And I'm just going to make this a function. I'm going to say all the intro stuff is going to happen in this intro function. And it's going to go red for a bit. And this is where, you know, if you feel uncomfortable errors being in your project, like just, just, uh, just breathe deep and just let it happen. It's all going to be okay. So I'm going to have an intro function. I'm going to have a game function. I'm going to have a pause function. I'm going to have a game over function. And I don't know what I want to do with this one. I don't really want to have a whole function for this, this final else. But I'll put in something there I'll talk about in a second. I'll just, I'll just type it in there, and you guys can add it in, too. I'm going to put a print line function, which will print to the console. And I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. I'm going to say error mode uh, uh, equals and then mode. So you're going to add all those things in. Let's go ahead and add those things yourselves. And after you've added these things in, our draw function is done. We are not going to change it ever after. We'll never come back to it will only be writing the intro function and writing the game function and the pause function and the game over function and so on. I think I'll put the just the, the bare mode framework on GitHub. So anytime you guys can just download that. I'll put that in, in a link on my website. So you can grab the mode framework whenever you need it. I think that would be nicer than just you saving your own copy. Uh, I should mention the print line thing. So print line, this is an L and an N, by the way. I should really make that clear because you might type one N or something. I don't know what you might type in there, but people do sometimes make that mistake. So it's print, like I'm printing my name, L, N. And it's pronounced print line. There's also just a print as well. It's different than print line. But what print line does is it prints to this space down here, this black bar. This is called the console. And in the console, I can just print words in there. And I usually do that to find mistakes, to help me find mistakes. Some of you, excuse me, some of you might have um, seen me type in print line 
when I was helping you with a project, if you had a particularly weird error or like hard to track error, you might have seen me type in print line to try and track it down. So this is just very helpful because it lets you peek inside of what your program is doing. Have you ever had that experience where, you're, where you run it and something doesn't happen and you're like, I have no idea why that didn't happen. I have no clue. Like you just feel helpless, right? Uh, and, and how could you? You need to like peel it back and like look and see what are the values of the variables? What is it trying to do? Is it even running this function? Is this if statement ever happening? The print line will let us do that. And I'll show you an example of, of how that's going to work coming out. Uh, so we'll kind of take it for granted. I, I guess I should also mention the else. The whole point of the else. I should have said this earlier, sorry. But um, like all these if, else ifs, like they have a condition, right? So else is like a catch-all. At the very end, if none of these other things were true, then it will always do this last one. So if we have a weird mode, like mode is negative 12 or you know, 99 or whatever, then you know, we don't want those modes. Those modes are bad. Like, we, don't, we don't have any definition for those things. So it would be kind of weird because if it was, say, 99 and we didn't have this else, then nothing would happen in our project. And we'd be like, what? what's happening? What, what's the problem? We wouldn't know. But now, if we have a weird undefined mode, at least it will print to the space mode error. And it will tell us what the mode's number is. And then we'll get to, you know, that will help us debug what went wrong. Because maybe like your friend, when you went to the bathroom, typed in mode equals 99 on your, your setup just to like screw around with you. And then, and then you like come back and like you could at least find where the 99 is typed or something. So, um, so there it is. Okay, so, uh, so, we're, so basically the draw function is done. Now what we have to do is we got to go define each of these functions. And we're going to do these in separate tabs. Because scrolling, scrolling, scrolling is... It's annoying. It's like it's hard to find stuff if it's all in like one tab. So we are able to make new tabs. So I'm going to make a different tab for each of our modes. So we're going to have one that's an intro tab, a game tab, a pause, and a game over. Be aware that the way that processing organizes its tabs is by the alphabetical order of the name of the tab. So if it bothers you that, um, I guess, game and game over will go first and then intro and then pause, if that bothers you, then you have to like put like a letter in front of it, like A underscore um, intro, and then B underscore game and stuff like that. So you can use like the name of the tab to, to change the order, but otherwise there's, there's you can't you can't reorder them like in Chrome. You can't like drag the tab and put them in the different orders. Like eight out of ten of you right now don't care, but two out of ten of you really care. You're like the order of the tabs is gonna really bother me. So for that, like, you know, one-fifth of you that are going to be bothered, just use the alphabet and name your tabs accordingly. I'm sort of in the middle. I kind of do care, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new tab. Oh, yeah, I should show you. There's a little uh, arrow beside the, the main tab here. You can drop that down, and you can make a new tab. And it's almost like it gives you a, a whole new area to type code in. So I just give a name for it. And it says a file because you'll actually see each tab will be stored in a separate file. So you're going to have like many different PDE files now. Uh, so that'll be interesting. So I'll just make one for each mode. I'll make an intro. I'll make a game. I'll make a pause. And I'll make a game over. So it's alphabetized them. And if that bothers you, then again, just change the name. The names don't really matter to the computer, so you can just use whatever you want. I'm not sure if you can put numbers at the front of them. You can try it out, but I don't know. It's all good. So, yeah, we have tabs now. We're unlocking all these like features of processing uh, that will make it easier to organize our projects and therefore less frustrating. I think, I think that's the key right there. I that's what I should have said at the very beginning of the class. It'll make programming less frustrating. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. So I, I still have these errors, right? It still doesn't know what intro is because making the tab isn't enough. You actually have to go say void intro, void game, and so on. And you don't actually need the tab. You could just go down here after the draw function and start typing in void this and void that. But I don't want to do it there because I don't want to have to scroll all over the place. So I'm just going to go over to game. 
It's going to be void game. And then and game over. Void game over. And type in your open and close braces right away. In intro, void intro. In pause, void pause. So I'll just click through my tabs. You can see that those functions are just being defined in each different tab. The tab name should correspond you know, roughly to what's inside of it, but it, they don't have to be identical or anything. The name of the tab doesn't actually matter, but if you name them nonsense names, then you're not really helping yourself very much, so try to make them make sense. And hey, look at that. These don't uh, cause errors anymore. They, um, processing is now comfortable that it knows what these things mean. Like, it knows where to find the definition for these things. Whew, we've got a lot of we've written a lot of lines of code, and guess what? It doesn't actually do anything. If I run this project, like it essentially does nothing. So <laughs> you might be like, "Wow, that we just spent like the last like 25 minutes in this like hot room typing stuff that ended up doing nothing." But I want you to know that that's part of the rest of how programming is gonna be. You are gonna be spending, and you are gonna be marked on and rewarded for organizing stuff and I think it's it's going to make your life easier in the long run but also less exciting <laughs> some people are going to be like oh it's so annoying but it's all good uh, so this is the point where the mode framework is done uh, you know for for this game you you can always expand it to add in more modes and stuff so I'm going to save it right now and I'll upload this to github and I'll call it mode framework you might also want to save yours as a separate file and just call it mode framework uh, mode framework and then I would recommend then saving another copy and call it clicker game so that the mode framework stays the same and then you keep on working on the clicker game version of it so having kind of two copies of this mode framework will just kind of be left alone and then we'll continue on with a copy of the mode framework project called clicker game and, and actually build a clicker game within that framework so I'll do that as well so I'll save it as Clicker game. So, I, unfortunately, it's on my desktop, which is not where you guys save your stuff. But if you go to my desktop, you'll see that I'll have two sketches. I'll have—I don't know where they save them. Here's like the mode framework sketch, and I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> I, I don't know. I saved it somewhere. But the other one is the, the clicker game. I guess I should actually double check it saved it to the right place. I need, I need to close some of these things. Oh dear, it's crashing. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll let it crash. Okay, so let's actually uh, go in and, and see if our modes are distinct. So I am going to... In my different modes, I'm just going to put a different color background just so I can see if they're different. We're not really going to build it yet. I just want to like make sure the mode framework actually works. Because right now, it's, it's just everything's empty. So I'm going to just pick different colors. So intro screen, I'm going to make it have a white background. Background white. And then maybe I'll make my um, pause screen have a black background. It doesn't really matter what colors you choose, just choose different colors. My game over screen, maybe we'll have a red background. Uh, it doesn't really matter though. The game screen, maybe I'll make a green background. And the reason why I'm doing this again is just to like, see if I change the channels, do I see the different colors as I go through? So I think I'll just start by putting mode equals intro. And I'll just manually type in the different modes and see if I see the different backgrounds. If you do this and you don't see it change, then you know you got something that's broken. But I'll run this. An intro is my white background. So if I run this, I should see a white screen. Looks good. And then I'll switch intro to 
game and I should see a green background. Looks good. It's like I've, I'm changing the channel, right? Mode is like the channel number. I'm just, what's on channel game is a green screen. Eventually we'll put better stuff in there. I'll put in mode pause. I should get a black screen. Yep. And I'll put in mode game over. And I'll get a red screen. Yeah. And notice that I went to the trouble to test that. Like, don't like, take it for granted. Do make sure that it is correct before you move on. Even things like your framework. Notice I just did one small thing, and then I test it. And then I do another small thing, and then I test it. It's always important to, like, not try to program, like, 50 lines of code and then press run and see, hey, did it work? Because then it's like, where was the problem? Where, where, you know, it's really hard to, to figure that out. I mean, I guess I kind of did type in 50 lines of code here uh, and then test it, but... Um, yeah, so I don't know. I guess that's not a great example, but as you're going forward, we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, so uh, our intro screen, our game screen, uh, game over screen, they'll all have different criteria. They'll be pretty simple. Like the intro screen will have a start button on it. When you click start, it's going to take you to the game and so on. And, and the game, we'll build a specific game that's going to be like a target moving around. you got to click on it, hence the name click a game. And there'll be a pause screen that'll have some criteria around it. There'll be a game over screen that'll have a criteria around it. It'll kind of loop us back to the intro screen and so on. So um, how ambitious are you guys feeling? So, so if you're feeling ambitious, then we'll continue on with making the game itself. If you're feeling less ambitious, we'll just design our intro screen which is a lot easier of a task. It requires no new knowledge because you know already how to draw stuff on a screen. And you already know how to make a button. So we can work on that today. And then next class, we could jump in to make the game itself. Or we could jump in right now and start making a thing moving around and, and click on it and make, get points and make it accelerate and all kind of stuff. So thanks, Elaine, what do you think? Oh, I could show it to you. But I can't right now. But I'll, I'll find one for sure. I'll show you what it's going to look like. Uh, so let's do a vote. How many people want to be like, oh, yeah, it's pretty hot in here. And I'm uh, exhausted from a long week of waking up early from the time change and all this kind of stuff. Or is it actually waking up late? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm so exhausted from waking up late. It's, it's like my whole system is out of whack. So how many people want to just kind of work on an intro screen, make a clickable button, and, and have that going on? Raise your hand if you're like, yeah, let's do intro screen. Yeah, about uh, eight people, nine people. How many people want to like push forward and learn some new stuff to make the game? Less people. Okay, so intro screen people win. Uh, so I'll stop this video. Probably should have stopped it before we did the vote because no one wants to see that on YouTube.